In today's video, I am going to talk about troubleshooting three pin voltage regulators. I'm going to try to keep this video under five minutes. Hopefully it can be done. I was inspired to do this video by Jack, the Vintage Electronics Geek. You can go over and check out his channel. He, of course, as the name implies, he works on vintage electronics equipment. Um, now, of course, every three pin voltage regulator is different, so you're going to have to go ahead online and look it up. Like, for example, this is a 7805, and the number basically is, the type number basically will tell you how much voltage is, is supposed to put out. 7805, the 5 at the end, of course, means 5 voltage output. And say if it would be 7812, it would be 12 volt output. So, also the pinouts are different too, so you can't go by this one. For example, here, the pin here on the left, that's the input. The middle pin is the ground, and the right pin is the output. So, the first thing I would do is go ahead and check the input and output voltages. This can be done while it's in circuit. Of course, I've got my 7805. It's out of circuit. I just had it uh, in the parts bin. I probably have a piece of equipment with a 7805 in the basement somewhere. But by the time I find that, it might take a while. And it would basically take me too long. So, we go ahead and we measure the input voltage and the output voltage. And we see if these are okay. Of course, if you've got no input voltage... Um, what you would have to do then is go ahead and disconnect the input then and then measure see if you're getting input voltage and so we measure the output voltage and if we've got nothing coming out of course we will go ahead and disconnect again and measure again we'll start out by go ahead and just by measuring um, basically in circuit let me go ahead and grab a ground here somewhere so I found a ground, I just took my voltmeter to the power supply ground and first I'm going to check the input and then the output. Now the output here should be, this is 7805 so the output should be 5 volts DC and the input has to be at least, I think with this 7805 it's going to have to be at least 2, 2.5 two volts higher. Now the output of the power supply is I think around 7.5 volts so I'm touching the input of the voltage regulator now and well we've got 7.39 volts and I'm going to go ahead and touch the output pin and it should be 5 volts which it actually is so now if I go ahead and turn down the 7.5 volts there's going to be a point where the voltage regulator is not going to work. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this here. So, voltage regulator is now putting out 5 volts. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn the, the power supply down. It's about, well right now it's putting out right under 7 volts, 6.8. 6 volts, see right there, it dropped out at supposed to hold at 5 volts and my power supply is putting out 6.8 and right there it's starting to drop out at about not 6.8 volts so again if you're if you don't have that difference the the thing is the input always has to be higher than the output by a certain number of volts and you'd have to look that up in your specifications now, so for, for example, now if I turn it up to 10 volts, nothing here. I've got the power supply up to 10 volts and my output here still stays steady. Or 11 volts, still 5 volts, right? But once I go be so below that certain threshold, again, see right there I'm at. And then it go ahead. So basically that would be, I think, around here. 6.7 volts that would be basically my 6.7 6.8 volts my dropout voltage that's when basically the voltage regulator dropped out so again 
uh, that's got to be checked. If if, that, if that's not correct, you might never get that voltage regulator to work. So we check the input output, which is basically okay. Now, if the output's not okay, what we'd have to do then we have to go ahead and disconnect the. What we can do is disconnect the. Um, the basically the circuit that's connected to the voltage regulator we can go ahead and disconnect that and we can see if the voltage regulator voltage comes back up basically what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take we'll remove the load and if it checks out good then what we can do is what I'm doing here right now I'll just go ahead and show that now if we look down here we can see I basically I have a 10 ohm 5 watt resistor I'm using that as a load and if I were to measure the voltage regulator and say I had the load disconnected say I'm working on some kind of a unit and I got a disconnected voltage regulator tests okay it's putting out the, that's still not enough because it can still break down under a load so that's why I put this resistor on here now so with this resistor we can go ahead and check the we can go ahead and check the voltage. Now you have to be aware that this resistor here is going to get pretty hot and the voltage regulator is going to get uh, pretty hot too. Yeah, and, and what you don't want with these voltage regulators um, they can only handle so much voltage. I think this one is I'm not exactly sure. Um, I would have to start the computer up and look at the data sheet again but I think it's over 30 volts or might be 32 34 35 volts or something like that if you go too high you probably you're going to end up destroying this thing and also the other way around you don't want your output voltage for example to be higher than your input voltage because then um basically there's like a what they call like a um, a pass transistors here and the current goes through that that's in inside here and basically that's going to be reverse biased and so you don't want that situation to happen that can say for example happen say you built some kind of a circuit which charged the battery um, and you shut everything off but your battery was charged and now the plus voltage would be here so you would have everything exactly backwards so you don't basically that's another thing you have to watch out for but that's not the subject of this uh, video and of course what we could do for example um, say we weren't getting any input voltage we could take a power supply if you have one that's uh, meets the requirements of the circuit you could hook that up instead of the circuit instead of the unit power supply and then see if you get good voltage coming out um, also what you could do is say if you had this thing disconnected you could go ahead and, and directly use the power supply and directly power the circuit too and see then if it acts normal so that's basically an option too So right now what we're taking a look at is both the input and the output. The input is 7.5 volts and it's drawing 0.5 amperes. The output is 5 volts. And again, I mentioned that this thing has a so-called dropout voltage, which basically means that if this input voltage goes too low, this 5 volts again this is a 5 volt regulator that's going to drop out so then you're basically your circuits not going to be working right so if you make a circuit like this or say if you're working on a unit and your power supply voltage is not right if, if there's no difference here the input's got to be higher than the output and it depends upon the, the voltage regulator so you have to go ahead and look up the specs but if you don't but if this if there's no difference then basically you you have a problem I'm gonna go ahead and show that one more time 
Um, so watch now again. So the this is the regulated output. Once I reach a certain point now, that is going to drop. And there it already went 4.9. That's already that's already off 4.8. So that's about the dropout voltage. Now notice I'm ready to I'm taking it up to 10 volts and it's still staying steady about uh, right over 5 volts or I can let's go up to 15 and we can see here it's st still the same but going at the other extreme it is a problem I mean if it drops out it's not going to destroy the circuit but see if now if I turn this up to a high if I went up to like over 30 volts whatever the destructive voltage is then of course the voltage regulator is going to self-destruct now this is just a bare bone circuit just to show that basic troubleshooting um, normally this would be mounted on a you would have a heat sink because these things get really hot but if they get if, now once they reach a certain point in temperature or they get a short circuit then these things will basically shut themselves off until the um, the short or the high temperature is removed and then they should work again as normal so I'm going to go ahead and try that next now we will induce a direct short the green wire is the output and the black wire you see here that's the ground and I'm going to put those two together and we should see the amps go way up and then they should level back down this this um, voltage regulator should still be usable although it is going to get pretty hot but I don't have a thermometer function here well I do have one temperature checker within this uh, uh, fluke but I'm using it right now for 40 amperes so so much for that okay we'll keep an eye on the uh, multimeter there see how many amperes we got going There we go. Went up to one, almost 1 1.5 amperes, and it's see it's calming back down. That's a dead short, and it's leveling out at about 700 milliamperes. So that dead short, I don't think it hurted it. It shouldn't. These things can take a lot, but we'll go ahead and find out. So now I remove the dead short, and I'm going to check the voltage across the output now I've got the multimeter the voltmeter already hooked up here of course this is the ground lead and let's take a look at the meter and when I bring the power supply up to 7.5 volts I should be getting 5 volts at the output bring up the voltage up now again I'm feeding in 7.5 volts DC to the voltage regulator and the output is supposed to be 5 volts DC and if I haven't destroyed it with the dead short, I should be getting 5 volts at the output. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the voltage up. And right now I am, the power supply showing me 7.5 volts DC. And right now we're looking at the output 5.02 volts DC. So the... Um, Volt, the voltage regulator is actually functioning as it should the dead short did not hurt it of course I could still go further and hook up the load again but I venture to say uh, it's still going to be okay so the next thing we're going to do is check out the voltage regulator with an ohmmeter and we're going to see if that gives us any useful indicator, so to speak. Obviously, if there's a short between, say, the input and output or something like that, that'll show up on the ohm meter. Um, or if you got an open or something like that. I just want to see what's the ohms measurement going to be like. What are we? What exactly are we looking at? And for this, I made myself a little chart. You see here. The voltage regulator's only got three pins, and here's my positive lead, and here's my negative lead. So I'm going to start out putting the positive lead on the input, and then 
negative lead is going to be on the ground, then the positive lead on the input again, negative lead is going to be on the output, and so forth until I fill the whole basically chart. And we'll go ahead and, and take a look. And here's my first test, which again is going to be t between the input and the ground. My positive lead is on the input, the positive lead of the ohmmeter is on the input, and negative lead of the ohmmeter is to ground. And this is what we get. We get a, right over 600,000 ohms, 0.36 mega ohms. So I'm going to write that in my chart. So the next test is between the input and the output. And we'll take a quick look here at the ohmmeter. And we basically get almost the same reading. So I marked, put that in my chart. See the chart is taken form. The next test will be the positive on the ground and the negative on the, basically the input. And then I'll just work my way down till I have all readings. Same here, um, positive lead on ground and the negative lead of the ohmmeter is to the input and almost the same. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill out the chart here. There's no sense in me saying this every time. It is kind of boring. Now here's my completed chart and um generally inconclusive of course if you had like a catastrophic short and you measured really low ohms or something like that or it'd be some kind of an open that would show up easily enough um, the lowest ohm readings was if I had the positive lead of the multimeter to ground and I took the negative to the output which is 4.7k 4700 ohms and also if I switch the leads around basically so I had the positive on the output negative on ground it was 5.6k um, so I would I would guess you could you could use this as part of testing unless of course again as I said you had a catastrophic short then of course that would show up easily um, enough I once I finished this chart up I tried it with another 7805 from a different manufacturer um, I think it's this one right here and the the basically the readings were about the same um for example this one here might be 2 point some k instead of 4.7 but between the pins it'll, it'll tell you okay here i got high here i'm supposed to expect high readings if for example i put the input to the ground or the input to the output i get high readings um even though let's say it might be off by 100k or so but in general, if I would measure this now here, if I would take this voltage regulator and if I measured here between the ground and the output here, I should get low ohms too. And if I took those leads and switched them around, same thing. I'm going to go ahead and just try that real quick just to show. So I'm going to put the positive lead of the ohmmeter on to the ground and the minus is going to the output. And here I've got low ohm reading, just like with the other uh, voltage regulator. It, it would be the exact same type, but a different manufacturer. You see, it's, it's off, I think just like a over 2K difference, but basically it's the same. And if I reverse the leads now, I've got the minus lead of the meter on the ground, and I'm going to put the positive lead to the output, and we've got about the same thing. So that goes to show I mean there are certain patterns there so I think this brings this video to a conclusion I could keep going on I could use a diode transistor function of a multimeter I could use a curve tracer on this voltage regulator I could use a my component checker um, but that would make another 20 minute video and um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna make a part two because it is kind of uh, tedious, I realized watches. I've, 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 I wanted this video to be only five minutes long, but that never seems to work out. I can never get all the info in in five minutes, so I'm sorry about that. Anyways, thanks for watching.